In this episode, Dr. Morten Irgens, who is the vice principal at Oslo Met, is talking about the future of AI in Europe and how we can position ourselves to ensure that we affect our future and are part of its destination. Hi, Morten. Thanks for uh, coming over. It's a pleasure. Anytime. <laughs> Just call me. Awesome. So I understood that you t- had a speech today about the future of AI in Europe. Yes, that's correct. Can and you tell a little bit about that? Absolutely. Now, you see, um, I started by talking about why we, should ca- why we should care and why Europe should care about the development in the world on the technology side. Mm. And like technology in general or AI? Well, uh, I think that we shouldn't look at AI purely from an AI perspective. AI mm. is a technology. No, it's not a technology. I'm completely wrong saying that. It's, it's, <laughs> it is, uh, it's basically a, a, a long list of technologies. Mm. Uh, it's a, a research area that is not a research area, but many. Mm. Uh, and, uh, uh, but it's, uh, it's just yet another step in the technological development. Uh, so uh, it's hard to say where AI starts and where AI ends. Mm. And AI, I mean, I should say that it's artificial intelligence and it's a really bad name for a research, uh, for, a, for a list of technologies. Really? Beca- yeah, Why? it is because it makes people think about things they shouldn't care about because it's not what we're doing. It's not about some, uh, it's not about a robot that can think <laughs> and act com- like a like human Like a Terminator. Be- yeah, no, or, 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 or uh, like uh, a nice robot who's doing anything for you and uh, in the home or uh, go and shop for you and whatever. Today, uh, artificial intelligence, AI is basically um, narrow. We mm. call it narrow AI. You know, it's 10 years since, since a human uh, was able to beat the world's best chess uh, program. 10 years ago. Mm. Before that, we thought playing chess was uniquely human. It was too creative. It required cognition. It required required strategy, knowledge about the game and all of that. But apparently it didn't. It didn't. (laughs) Apparently. No, it didn't. Not only apparently. It didn't. Uh, But that, if you ask that chess uh, machine to Mm. do something else, like go and uh, shop for you or... uh, uh, read a medical paper and tell you the content of it, it can't, of course. Mm. Every little application today that is doing fantastic by it, every little ap- application that has some AI core can do something amazingly well and nothing else. Mm. Just that specific so, thing. Yes. So when you hear the word artificial intelligence, you think that there is somebody or something that can act and think like a human and that is as uh, versatile as a human and can reason and learn as a human. It's mm. not the Maybe case. a better word would be specific intelligence. Uh, the great thing here is that we use the word intelligence in many ways mm. when we talk uh, as humans. We think about uh, intelligence as being cognition, as intelligence being self-confidence. Mm. That's not the case. So, <laughs> so this was a long little thing about yeah. why AI, artificial intelligence, is a really bad name for a really great field of research mm. or a really great many fields of research. Mm, yes. I understand. And then, uh, so, back to why Europe should care. Uh, well, um, you know, it's said that it's because technology is defining the reality we live in. Mm. That is the reason. We are all... Um, um, living and thinking and acting surrounded by technology. You know the story about uh, the, the, the elderly fish that was swimming around in the water and met three young fishes? Uh, I, I, I don't know, the plural of fish. Anyway, and, and the elderly f- fish was saying, hey guys, how's the water? And the three younger fishes said, what's water? Mm. You know, hey, how's the technology? Our response is, what's technology? It's surrounding us everywhere and we hardly notice. We notice when it doesn't work. Absolutely. But when it works, you know, it becomes invisible to Mm. us. Now, um, back to why Europe should care. It's a long intro here, but (laughs) very long intro. That's fine, we have time. Europe should care because uh, this technology that surrounds us everywhere defines the way 
we think, what we talk about, mm. what we, how, we, how we work, how we play, how we talk with our kids, what we discuss over table, how we look at the universe and how we look at ourselves as human beings. Mm. A very simple example, uh, up through the ages, there's always been one defining technology who defines the way you look at the world. And the human humans and the human mind and the human brain has sometimes been described as uh, a network of viaducts. And then it became, uh, you know, electricity and it became, mm. tele we, you know, our brains are a telegraph uh, system. And then it became, you know... A computer and etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah so technology defines the reality and what i'm concerned about and what i think europe should be concerned about is not only that the ai market might be huge but well, i could define how we live without our intervention you know uh some people say that the best way of controlling the future is to create it. Well, mm. Europe is leaving that creation of our future, shaping our future to others, and to others that may be not so close to the way we like in Europe to organize our um, work life, uh, our <laughs> etc. You know, so yeah. so let's let's bring it back home. And are you thinking about countries like uh, U.S. and China who are world leading in AI? Obviously. Uh, a machine learning system that's been trained on, on, on the Chinese data might not work here at all. Mm. But that's just a very simple example. It goes deeper than that. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let me tell you what is the good, the bad, and the ugly of, Europe, of Europe in the AI area. Actually, mm. I'm just going to tell you the good and the bad, <laughs> not the ugly. Number one, the good. Europe's universities are strong. Mm. Also in AI, really, we have the we have really good universities and we are really good AI researchers. Mm. Number two, Europe is a research powerhouse, really. Uh, it's our research community is larger than that in the United States and larger than that in China. Mm. So we have both the the brain power. We have both the quality of the research; it's really high mm. quality and the quantity. And so we have the brain power. Number three, Europe is a manufacturing powerhouse. Now, European manufacturers are among the largest global innovators. Mm. So that's the three good, really good starting position to create something good. We uh, have a lot of advantages. Yeah, But we why do. do we have those advantages? Uh, and are we utilizing them? No, so then let's go. I'll just let add that uh, European, we, on the innovation side, we, we are also growing in the venture and, and entrepreneur side, which mm. we used to be really bad at. And if you look at the world's most innovative countries, there are many ways to, 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 to measure things. But if you look at indicators, European countries like Switzerland and Sweden and UK, Finland, Denmark are really really strong innovators. Mm. So we are in a good position. So now I'm going to switch to the bad. Yeah? Mm. That's the most important part. <laughs> uh, depends on your outlook at life, I guess. Well, because we have to overcome them yeah. to utilize what's good about us. So we, we are growing also in AI, innovation and research. But the others are moving faster. So mm. Europe is adding an AI gap to its uh, digital gap. Yeah. Now, United Kingdom is leaving the European Union. It's United Kingdom has the strongest AI performance in, 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 uh, in Europe. Mm. They have really strong university labs and industries in AI. Uh, number three, bad thing is that Europe invests significantly less than the United States in major factors that, uh, in, that increases the innovation capacity. We invest less in software and databases, less in intellectual property, less in competences like organizational capital and training, mm. and less in startups. Uh, and, and Europe's research community, and I was saying how great it is, but it's, it's diffused, it's spread out. Mm. It's really spread out. So European companies are, uh, European universities are, or, or capacity is just a lot of, one person guys and three person guys and yeah. i saying guys sitting in disparate countries here and uh, yeah mm. and then uh 
uh, I believe that your EU's AI strategy is unclear. And I can add that uh, when the European Commission should create its strategy, who should it talk with? Mm. There is not... Europe doesn't have an, an industry association in AI. They don't have anybody to talk with. So I will get back to that because <laughs> I'm going to talk about uh, an organization that I've participated in is establishing called mm. CLEAR. But, you know, this is important. Uh, we, if you look at uh, the number of AI researchers in the world, I will mean, just count everybody that has published a journal article of the last 10 years. Yeah, count everybody. Then Europe has about, what, 45,000 uh, AI researchers, if you call that AI, mm -hmm. anybody who has published a paper in AI. Well, the United States have 30,000 and China 20,000. So we have... So we have more. We have more. But, but if you look China at... China and US accelerating there? Because they're actually it, funding it? Yeah, they are. But, you know, in, in, and, and also there is a brain drain to the States from mm. Europe. If you look at uh, venture, cap venture funding, it's about, it stood two years ago, but almost $18 billion in, in the States and $3 billion in Europe. Mm. So there you go, that's its problem. So that's why we created uh, something a year ago, a year and a half ago, an organization called CLEAR. Okay. It's, it's, it, CLEAR stands for the Confederation of AI Laboratories. Actually, Confederation of Laboratories of AI Research in Europe. And that is because when we saw that the European Commission had plans to pump in like 2 billion euros a year into mm. AI innovation and uh, AI research, we thought, and, and that as a part of a bigger picture where the objective of the Commission is to see a total funding of AI research and innovation in Europe of about 20 billion euros a year. That's mm. a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot of money. And it's the coalition of a lot of different countries? Or well, that, that, is, that is national funding, uh, commission funding, uh, private funding, mm. governmental funding, etc. But it's so many ways this money could be spent wrong. So we established CLEAR as an AI research network. Uh, it has... Um, uh, more than 3,000 uh, individual AI researchers. The mm. best AI scientists in Europe are members. Um, and more than 300 uh, research groups and labs and institutes in AI that uh, organizes more than 19,000 AI scientists, uh, or scientists. Uh, so um, with that base, we say that what Europe needs well, we have, don't have all the answers, but we believe that uh, the Europe's AI strategy should be excellence across all of AI. Mm. Machine learning, machine reasoning, vision, you know, et cetera, et cetera, everything. But we also say for all of Europe, we need to find a way to mobilize all these companies, innovators, and researchers that are spread across Europe. And we believe it should have a human-centered focus. Mm. So that's, that's what we want. And how do we do that? We believe that Europe should establish a central hub. That sounds... What is that? You know CERN in uh, Switzerland, mm. uh, most, mostly known for its particle accelerator. Yep. Yeah. It's a beacon for the world. The research done there and what is done in uh, everything that CERN is doing has the attention of from the whole world. Absolutely, it's also a privilege. So we believe that uh, Europe needs a CERN for AI. Uh, so that's a hub where the best and brightest and uh, with, and also a lot of programs mm. for uh, um, for early stage researchers that can come, spend three months, mm. three years working on exciting projects and go back to the research environment. We also believe there should be a network of centers of excellence in AI. And I think Europe needs a beacon. You know, why do so many AI researchers, AI scientists, leave Europe to start working in Amazon, Google, Apple, etc.? Is, is it for the money? Because the money is great. Mm. It's not for the money primarily. You know, these are scientists, researchers who 
live and breathe for their research. Mm. And they get the opportunity to work on something really cool on a great grand scale. Mm. And they don't find it in Europe. It's not here. We need to create that beacon which becomes a gravity well for scientists from all over the world to come to Europe and participate in, in, uh, in something exciting. And that will then drive up both science, research and innovation uh, in, uh, in Europe. I also believe that the European AI strategy should in make sure that it should leave the triple helix model behind. What is the triple helix model? Well, it's the following. Uh, it's looking at uh, innovation happening between three sectors, industry, academia, and the public sector. Mm -hmm. And the public sector basically is paying for <laughs> for the <laughs> long, <laughs> yeah, they're paying for the long-term <laughs> research in in uh, in uh, academia. So there is an idea that academia is doing all this great research, mm -hmm. and then hands it over to a grateful industry who takes it and runs with it and create products out so of it. So if we take just a five or ten year perspective, this was this triple helix model is kind of old-fashioned. Mm. Uh, you know, you need to bring in two more components. You need to bring in uh, invest venture capital investors, and you need to bring in entrepreneurs. Mm. Then you have what you call a pentahelix model, five components. Industry, government, academia, entrepreneurs, and investors. Mm. Now you bring that together, which Europe hasn't been that good at, uh, and create real uh, research and innovation ecosystem, then something will start to, to, to you know, something will happen. Mm. Something will cook. So we'll create an ecosystem yes. of the necessary components. Yes. Clear is uh, a poor organization and we don't have any money. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's really a uh, bottom-up uh, uh, scientist-based, researcher-based organization who basically says, we are, we are uh, raising a flag here. Mm. And we're saying we have something to give to the process of developing the strategy. And if if uh, national governments and uh, the Commission and others are interested, we can really contribute mm. to create a great future for Europe. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's a political discussion that all will participate in. But uh, we can really deliver. Uh, I, I should add that uh, nine, nine uh, governments in Europe has, uh, has released a support letter saying that we support CLEAR and its vision. Mm. Now, the next thing we need to do is to get, you know, about 20 more <laughs> governments to support us and, and the Commission, and we can help in delivering yeah. well, this vision. that seems quite plausible, to be honest, because, as you say, there is something which we do need. Yeah. And I bet a lot of people that are listening to the podcast are quite interesting to learn more about CLEAR. How do they do that? Well, you go to www.clear-ai.org <laughs> or you search Google Clear, C-L-A-I-R-E mm. uh, and, and artificial intelligence and I think you get it. Get there. So, That's so, uh, But, you know, um, go there, sign up and, uh, and we're creating a fantastic uh, um, network of AI researchers in Europe. Right now, we are collaborating with the Commission uh, uh, on, uh, with input to their work on creating a public-private partnership in uh, AI. That's perfect. Thanks a lot, Martin, for having the time to come over. It's a pleasure.